Okay, uh, back again with me, Andreas Dike. Today I'm going to talk about boron removal from silicon using slag treatment. So uh, this again will be simulated in Faxet simulation software. Uh, and then we are going to talk about one paper that has been published by Islam and my supervisor, uh, Professor Akbar. I will show the uh, paper later. But let's go to the illustration. So uh, usually in slag treatment or, or slag metal reaction, we have impurities in the metal phase that uh, we have to remove to the slag phase. And in this case, this impurity is the boron. So in the silicon phase, in the molten silicon phase, we have boron impurities that will be transferred into the slag phase that is calcia and silica mixture. And I have summarized the data uh, about the operating conditions and also the materials here, but you can also see the uh, data in the uh, publication by Islam. Here is the uh, title of the uh, publication. And I have uh, summarized the operating condition and also the materials here uh, in this presentation. So let's talk about the paper in details. The paper talks about the kinetic analysis. Now, kinetic analysis, it means that uh, several samples are taken in different times. So if we look at the data taken here, we see that uh, our, uh, the sample were taken in different times. You see here, uh, the concentration of boron initially was 375 uh, ppm uh, weight. And it was decreasing uh, until it reached equilibrium. So in the fact set simulation, we cannot know the kinetic study of uh, the uh, sim uh, the uh, experiment, but we will know the equilibrium uh, result of the uh, of the experiment. So basically, in uh, fact sets using equilibrium mod uh, module we will know whether the uh, reaction or the result is uh, really happening or will be happening or not. So in this case, uh, let's just uh, go to the uh, fact set simulation. In fact set simulation, we click Equilib module here. This is the preloaded uh, simulation before, we just click no. And this is the uh, preloaded database, we just click no again. And we will select the uh, database that we will use in this simulation. So basically, uh, I usually just click this facts PS because we want to know the uh, pure substance characteristic. And F the oxide here because we use oxides in our study here, the calcium and the silica. And also this database that is quite important for our case, the F sub C. Now, this database will explain the characteristic of uh, ultra pure silicon. So UPSI here, it means that uh, ultra pure silicon. Now after that, we click OK. Now, Let's go back to the data in the presentation. Uh, we have silicon two grams, we have boron in 300 ppm, that means uh, 0.0006 grams, and also calcium two grams and silica two grams. So let's just input that into our simulation.
now uh, you may see that the total amount of uh, slack here is twice as much as the silicon. It is because we know previously that uh, from previous uh, researcher that uh, the good mass ratio between the slack and silicon in this case is between two and five. So if you want to have a bigger a mass ratio of slack uh, versus silicon, you can always add more uh, of silica and also calcia here. But now we will just use this data. And in this case, I will not be uh, looking into the gas phase because I know that within that temperature there will be no uh, or there will be a little uh, gas actually but it is negligible so we can we can ignore that and this is the uh, liquid phase of the uh, ultra pure silicon here and this is the slack that we want to see and the temperature is 1550 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 1 atm. So now we have this mixture, 2 grams of silicon with uh, 300 ppm of boron and 2 grams of calcia and 2 grams of silica mixed together with this temperature and uh, pressure. And we will see uh, the result when we click this button calculate so now let's see the uh, result here now uh, if you want to save this uh, result you can always click save here as I have uh, explained this in the previous uh, video that I have uploaded before but now let's see the result in this panel so yeah the product is two grams of uh oh sorry uh, this is in more actually so i have to change it to uh gram here sorry it is my mistake let's just click next this is temperature, this is the pressure, and we click calculate. So now let's see the uh, result of our simulation. So 2 grams, uh, the product is 2 grams liquid with the boron concentration of 6.43 to the power of minus 3. And we can see that the amount of boron in our sample is decreasing because previously we have six to the power of uh, minus four but now we have 1.3 so we can see that it is now decreasing but we also found cal calcium uh, incorporated into our silicon here so now let's just focus into the uh, result that we want to see here. The boron that was initially 6 to the power of minus 4 to the, uh, times 10 to the power of minus 4, it is now 1.2. So now we can see that it is uh, decreasing. To make it easier, I can save this to Excel spreadsheet. and select the uh, substance that we want to see for example the boron in liquid uh, phase here and the silicon also maybe also the calcium now other than the uh, silicon phase here we also have the slack phase the slack phase here we also click these three uh, compounds and click OK. 
okay and let's just name it as for on removal we click save okay now let's see the result Now, as, can, as, as we can see here, uh, the, the uh, boron in grams is shown here. If we want to see the uh, weight percentage of boron, we got here, right? And in simple calculation, if, we, if you want to see the uh, PPM of boron in our liquid uh, silicon phase because this is in percentage you need to multiply it by 10 to the power of 4 so now the resulting of uh, boron in ppm in the uh, silicon phase is 64.3 now let's see the the uh, result uh, the uh, that we have in the paper. So the result in the paper here at equilibrium when the slug to silicon mass ratio is two, just as uh, we have uh, simulated before, is quite high. It's still quite high. It is around one hundred and twenty-five here. So. Uh, what makes it different is that uh, there are a lot of uh, variables in the real experiment that cannot be simply explained by a thermodynamical database. But the thermodynamical study will provide us the possibility that actually this uh, result will be happening. Or maybe we can see that uh, the uh, boron removal is successful in the thermodynamical study so uh, we can try to do that in our laboratory experiment so maybe that's all for today um, i hope you enjoy this presentation have a nice one